Hello and welcome to the Alliance Tournament 14 Weekend Wrap for the 1st and 2nd of October 2016. Alliance Tournament 14 is off and underway. 96 matches were played this weekend, featuring teams from 64 EVE player alliances, but there can only be one winner. Former five-time champions Pandemic Legion opened up proceedings by crushing Iron Armada in a truly comprehensive victory. But the boys from Moldenheath will know that they still have a chance of progression through the elimination bracket of the tournament. Get one kill. Did he kill one of them? No. Uh, will you? No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a chance. Goodbye, life. Wow. Rip. So PL maintained the status quo by dispatching Iron Armada and getting their first victory of the tournament. You can see the rest of the victors from this first group of matches highlighted here in green. Winners from these early stages go into the undefeated bracket and keep their lifeline in the tournament intact as long as they remain undefeated. A loss in the undefeated stage will not drop you from the tournament, but instead will drop you into the elimination bracket where all matches are sudden death, but you still can go on to win the tournament by remaining undefeated. Match 13 of the tournament saw the highly fancied Shadow Cartel going up against my boys a band apart. Shadow Cartel ran deep into last year's competition before finally falling to Alliance Tournament heavy hitters, the Tuskers. So Jose, Rix Javix and the boys are going to have their work cut out for them. In a fiercely contested match, Shadow and ABA trade ship for ship right up until the buzzer. So this match is going right down to the wire. But if this is started, it can live for 12 seconds. A band apart's gonna win this on points, and I have to say, Aura is probably just kicking himself right now for taking that MJD completely in the wrong direction, and absolutely throwing away the the absolute power that a Balgorn has early on in a match with the long range webs and the powerful newts and nosses. And if oh my god, time, time is up! Wow! Oh my god, that's so exciting! Okay, 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 that this is the closest game we've seen so far. It's Holy been shit. great. Wow, Bluey snuff stuff. Pulling it by, just the skin of his teeth. Oh, that was exciting. In a truly thrilling match, a band apart scraped through against the Shadow Cartel, dropping one of the powerhouse teams of the tournament straight into the elimination bracket, where things are sure to get intense as they face sudden death matches from this point going forward. It's interesting at this stage of the tournament to look at the different compositions teams choose to field and the subtle mind games in play with some teams choosing to keep their big guns at home and not reveal their hand too early. I was impressed by the Brave Collective team and by Vylor Accords who steamrolled Solar Fleet and will play a band apart in the undefeated bracket. The last of the opening matches for teams here at Alliance Tournament 14 sees a number of interesting matchups. We have one of the tournament favourites, the Tuskers, up against the popular player alliance Waffles. Another team with strong tournament history, the Ronin, taking on Red vs Blue. And probably the pick of the matches from an entertainment standpoint, Castabouts vs Mercenary Coalition. Really no no tackle to speak of in this match. Just, nah, uh, don't need this is tackle. just going to be a, a brawl. And it looks like MC are going for that Rattlesnake. They know they have that front end of DPS. And oh my god, that Rattlesnake is getting nuked. Four bombers, two Bargas, two Golems are going to eat that Rattlesnake, no problem. The, the Kirins are trying to rep it and it is just getting nuked. It, this was a DPS race, right? Kirins, they can rep almost as much as a Skimmy, but those Kirins, they have maybe 5km optimal range, and obviously they weren't close enough to rep the Rattlesnake and the Navy Scorpion. Um, basically, this was a D DPS race. MC brought more bombers, while Castabals actually just brought just reps, and it looks like MC is just pushing that just nuking as many big ships as possible. This is actually really close now. This yeah, is it's really, really close. close. They so still have their down, If it Okay, finally the Gil is doing what they need to do against these crews. That Navy Scorpion going down hurts for sure, but it's not the worst because 
These Vargas, while they will be able to apply somewhat to the Kirins and the Gilas, if the Kirins and the Gilas stay away from, say, a Newt in the utility high of the Vargas, um, they could win this just uh, on time, basically. Looks like these Vargas are sitting lovely. The final Gila down on the Casabar side, and it's just clean up for MC. That's the, quite, a, quite a close match if you, uh, if you look at it. I mean, if they, if they rushed in their Gilas to kill their uh, MC's um, Bomber Wing, then it would have been a, a much closer fight, in my opinion. That wraps up all of the team's opening games of the tournament and going into their second matches, teams will now hopefully have found their feet and somewhat got a taste of the highly competitive, high pressure environment of tournament matches. Moving into team's second games, we are going to start with the teams in the undefeated bracket and to get us underway, we will go straight to Pandemic Legion versus Complaints Department. And, oh, the GMs are saying in local that it is, in fact, not the flagship. So, just a fancy 150 billion Eskatana, nothing else. Meanwhile, all of Pandemic Legion has gotten thoroughly on top of the Complaints Department. One of the Navy Brutics is already into low armor, and the Confessor is dropping quickly as well. The Complaints Department has been putting damage on the stuff near the entire match, and the Atan has been keeping it up perfectly, Tinking doing an excellent job. But a Natana kill would probably be oh my god, Tinking is going have. down. He is in low shield. He's just wrapping up. He's in armor. He's in half armor. If they get this, he is dead. Elbel Gorns and Makaros have newts on him. He's not able to pull range. He's got webs down too. He's probably gonna pop before he can get to range. He is definitely gonna pop. He's going in fifty-nine percent armor. He's not ASPing or anything. He does not have an ASP. He is dead. Tinking is down. Is dead. That's a hundred and fifty billion is down and wasted. Oh my god. Complaints department made us wait for a little bit, but they got an Natana kill. Holy crap, that is a massive, massive kill. There are only 46 of those ships left in the game now. No more ever going to come. And now these PL ships, which are up close, are going to start taking damage. They've got no reps. I don't think it's going to matter too much. They've only got a Balgorn and a Shimu, which is about to be exploded. And with a Balgorn and a Mauler, it's just mop up for Pandemic Legion. So PL getting past complaints department, but not without losing a 150 billion ISK Atana. If you convert that to real world currency, that is 2,500 US dollars. So this victory certainly came at a price. We also saw the League of Unaligned Master Pilots, or Lumpy, get past Rabble Alliance and look impressive fielding a kitey setup that takes a lot of piloting skill and showing that they deserve to be among the betting favourites to go all the way in this tournament. Another tournament favourite Exodus got through against Vydra Reloaded, while My Boys A Band Apart went down to Vylor Accords, but did manage to relieve Vylor of their flagship Macarial, so they'll head into the remainder of their matches without their flagship. Oh, the Macarial's about to go down. Uh, there goes the flagship. Oh man, one for one trade, so a really expensive Macarial going down. That brings us to the final five matches of the undefeated bracket. Lots of big names here, including the Tuskers and the Ronin. Tuskers opponents wrote Capel. Mercenary Coalition, another alliance with a strong history in EVE on the Tranquility servers. And also the Afterlife, who have looked very strong this year. With the Afterlife getting past CO2, they will face Brave Collective in Round 2 of the Undefeated Bracket, whilst Mercenary Coalition will go up against the Tuskers after their victory, and the Ronin will clash with Agony Empire. Our next series of matches takes us into the Elimination Bracket of the tournament, so we are going to see our first teams bite the dust here. Alliance Tournament 14 will bid farewell to Nullsec Alliance Seed Nullis, Badfellas Inc., Nano Black, official winners of Takeshi's Castle, and Scary Wormhole People. In this meta, this Blood Raider heavy meta, not choosing a two point crewer and instead going for a Phobos is a bad call. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that Chester knows better than Psychotic Tendencies. Oh, damn, high praise. And that brings us to the final series of matches from this elimination round and day one of Alliance Tournament 14. Massive games for all of these teams, but we will be saying goodbye to 11 more competitors here. Putting it all on the line, Waffles break out their flagship Typhoon Fleet issue as they come up against Dreamfleet. 
it and looks waffles like are tanking yeah yeah it looks like now. the waffles uh typhoon is uh waffles and is actually jammed because the tier 5 from uh dark rc is actually taking a hell of a lot of damage it looks like the anira's did actually get a jam off uh blackwood did get actually jam off the anira so he's in really big trouble if this anira is not rep planned soon he will die but they need to get a lock back, otherwise they'll be losing this Typhoon Fleet issue. Oh, the reps, okay, are, he, reps have just landed. Reps, are just reps landed. have landed, but it might be a little oh, bit too uh, late. Oh, he's, he's living to win, that's for sure. And he is down, TFI down on uh, Waffle's side. Oh, I think the Oneros jammed though. again. Wood Vulcan, the Fleet Typhoon, that's the flagship for Waffles, is not getting that many reps. It looks like he's got a bit of a local tank going, but not any remote reps coming in. This is the flagship as well. But the Blackbird on the Dreamfleet side is actually taking a lot of damage. They Waffles realize they need to kill this Blackbird before the Aeneas gets jammed again. Because if this Aeneas gets jammed again, this fuck, this tier five will die. And it and yeah, that's what they're doing right now. He is dropping structure three or four percent of structure every time there's a volley. He's holding an armor, but the oh, structure is just bleeding. Oh, the structure bled a lot good. there. Yeah, I think he might actually go down. He is down. Flagship from the Waffle side is dead. Oh my god. Yeah, it looks like Waffles are just getting cleaned up now. This Purifier is the only one left. He might be able to pull off some hero moves, but 30 seconds till the match ends, so we'll see if it dies or not. But yeah, yeah this they is, have uh, to MJD out. Yeah, it looks like the Dream Fleet had so much control on the Waffles side. They just, they literally just controlled the Waffles team right there. So it's heartbreak for the eliminated teams as they crash out and will have to look to next year's tournament. But with the day one matches done and dusted, things are really starting to heat up as we head into day two of the competition. Day two of Alliance Tournament 14, and we start in the elimination bracket with round two of the sudden death matches. A further 16 teams will be departing the Alliance Tournament in this stage, so the stakes could not be higher. Here we see Iron Armada, who we saw in the first match of the tournament, still alive and kicking after they won their previous match, and they will go through here against the Rabble Alliance. I'm glad to say that my boys ADA also make it through, along with Snuffed Out, who they will play in the next round, and Phoebe Freeport Republic also making it through and looking good against Fane Disorder. Continuing with round 2 of elimination, and we have teams vying to keep their place in the tournament. Kick, Low, Sechnia, Shalupin, their opponent CO2, Cough Alliance and their opponent CVA, as well as Rote Capel, will all be hoping that they have what it takes to progress further beyond this stage. Yeah, and so they do have the Oneros and the Simi, so they both have T2 Cruiser Logi, which should be helpful in keeping these teams alive, but the Oneros isn't able to actually really keep these the support wing of Cough alive. Like the Sweeple, for example, is now deep into armor and he's going to be going into structure soon and it's not looks does not look like he's catching reps very quickly the cva merlin has been an absolute hero he's on top of the balgorn at zero kilometers and so far he's been able to scram and web him he's being nos now but this merlin right a two point tech one forget is completely able to lock down a faction battleship cva playing this excellently screening off the exact targets that they need to to keep their team alive well, I think they're trying to shoot this Caracol as like a last-ditch effort to claim any sort of points on the board, but I mean, with Koff losing this, they're going to be dropped out of the, the Alliance tournament now, since this is a loser's bracket. Yeah, it looks like uh, you can see that Koff is uh, coughing a bit too hard and now choking in this match. We're back here once again in the undefeated bracket and with the 16 teams still holding on to their lifeline in this competition. There are just so many talented alliances here in this bracket and eight of them will be dropping into elimination, adding even more quality into the unforgiving sudden death playoffs. Confirmed in local that Lumpy are actually bringing their fleet typhoon flagship. So we will see a big fancy ship here. Northern Coalition did not bring a fiend because Lumpy banned it, getting that value ban out of Lumpy. Yeah, look at that absolute swarm of rep drones that are on top of that executor at zero. NC Dot is doing the exact same thing that they did earlier against Test to knock them out. They're putting their typhoons on top of them at zero in order to smart bomb off all the drones. Once Lumpy loses all those drones, the executor won't be able to stay up. 
Yep, that is exactly what's happening. We see a Bargus running at this executor, smart bombing. Sharp is killing all of the drones, and they're all gone. They're all gone. This executor is going to start dropping really quickly now. All the rep drones for the entire Lumpy team are now dead. And Sidas Basilisk is still caught by this crewer. Uh, the How longer the crewer it, kind of sucks on him. Oh, there he goes. Crewer down. Lumpy managed Basilisk to win down the, the Logi trade. Time. They've managed to successfully force a Logi trade. That is incredible. That is definitely incredible. I didn't see if bombs went off or what. Did you guys? Did anyone see if bombs went off? That's the only thing I could have expected. No bombs because went off. They, they just synchronized died. a cruise volley on top of the Basilisk. And now the purifier of Frag Pirate is down for Lumpy. Uh, DHB Wildcat right now is webbed and nuded, not moving very fast, but they just finished off one of the Typhoons of Lumpy. So Lumpy have their flagship Foon left, or flagship Fleet Foon, and a normal Foon and a crewer for tackle. But Blue Morpheum's already in a low structure. He's going to die. They traded a Caracal for a Typhoon. That is not good. Yeah, having said that, the Cerberus has been forced to use about half, it would appear, of his ASB charges. But all Lumpy has left is an Eos, a Fleet Typhoon, and a Crewer. There's absolutely no significant damage left on their team. NC Dot has just taken this match. But we form Volta counter by just webbing and scrambling a Blackbird with their, uh, with their vengeance. Yeah, they're hard committing onto this Blackbird, and they've already got their scream onto the Oneros. Now the Oneros is grappled. They're going to all in this Oneros as soon as this Blackbird pops. That is an excellent trade. Volta is doing this absolutely surgically. They know what they need to do in order to break this core, having brought it themselves. Volta is forming, or just trying to get uh, a Typhoon and a Confessor. They're not even trying to counter jam the Blackbird. And Oneros goes down. Hard Knock Citizens lose their Lodgy first. That is a huge blow to their team. It's disappointing really piloting. and surgical piloting by the support wing of Volta, knowing how to not only get tackle on something, but then to burn around the screen and then get a tackle on the Oneros. Volta was able to use that, and then once the Oneros was down, they snowballed the match. Excellently and surgically flown by them. That is going to be hard. You do not want to go down to that lower bracket. You have to go through Lumpy and Hard Knock Citizens, and then you have to fight the winner or the loser of the PL versus NC Dot match later. Oh, just end it. Just end it right now. That that would that would be the worst thing to see going up when you uh, lose a match. We get into that stage of the tournament where there's nearly no bad teams uh, left in the winners bracket, and it's really showing here. Those Arbitrators seem a perfect pick against the Tuskers comp. So many tracking disruptors being applied to those core battle cruisers, but they're still losing ships. It's still not enough. It's almost as if MC picked the perfect counter comp, and Tuskers like, no, we're just going to win anyway. That's just what we do. None of the Tuskers teams have even been able to be pushed into armor, and there goes an Arbitrator for Mercenary. Another ship down. This looks bad for Mercenary Coalition. Four minutes into the match, and they may have already lost. We've only got two minutes left. And Tuskers are up by a measly 11 points. So I mean, MC, they just need to kill one Navy Brudix and they're in the lead. I mean, if MC Dot managed to snipe this Guardian, get it. Oh, the Scorpion! Suddenly, reps broke and the Scorpion goes down. That puts them, Tuskers, at a 29 point lead. Mercenary Coalition have just over two minutes to bring it back. They're neuting that Guardian. If they can snipe it down and then get another ship, maybe they can pull it back and win on points as the clock ticks down. But it oh. is going to be so close. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. meanwhile, the Tusker's Guardian is still getting some new pressure, but it looks like it's not from the Balgorn, it is from an Arbitrator. There's no oh. web on it, he is fine. There goes the Deacon, Deacon of Deleter from MC. Dot. This, I think, may be the final nail in the coffin for the Mercenary Coalition team. With one Deacon down, the other is just not going to be able to tank, not with Repbots, not with anything. It goes down as well, and Tusker's Co. finally cleaning up this match with a minute 20 left. And Suleiman is in fact flying the flagship Valgorn for the Tuskers. That has been the Flaghorn the whole time. We missed it from local chat, as the GM said, just as the match started. That is why it has been able to control these guys so much better. Because its Newt's error and Nosses are that much stronger. Its webs go that much further because it is the flagship. And Tuskers bringing it out against Mercenary Coalition, saying we don't want to be dropped down to that elimination bracket. It is too spooky down there. And they're going to send Mercenary Coalition down to face those ghosts. And that brings us to the final eight matches of this first weekend of AT14. It is in the elimination bracket, so without further ado, let's give another eight teams their marching orders. A moment of silence, please, for our eight former tournament hopefuls. 
Taking a look at the betting odds for teams to go all the way in this tournament, there's little surprise in seeing the bookies have Pandemic Legion as their favourites to take the cake at AT14. Although they are fairly closely followed by the Tuskers, who are my pick for this tournament, and Lumpy, who are very shortly priced at around $6.50. But with proceedings wrapped up here for this first tournament weekend, we can look forward to days three and four of this competition, where some truly mouth-watering matchups await. So make sure that you're tuning in over at EveNT on Twitch. You will find a link for the stream in the description of this video. I do look forward to seeing you for our next matches in Alliance Tournament 14, but until then, fly dangerous.